Hi, and welcome to the Bee Watch Rewatch, where we relive the magic of BTV and movies and narrate the story so it feels like you're watching right here next to us. Have fun laughing at the B U T N nonsense of it all. All right, guys, welcome to episode two Mahalo, Hawaii. So just a real quick recap from last week, Sean Monroe, well, Mitch, actually, the Hoff, uh, established an elite team of lifeguards mm-hmm. and put Sean Monroe in charge. Right. So this is, I believe we're going to dive into a little bit more of that intense lifeguard training. So we pan out and all of the lifeguards in the elite squad are standing <laughs> precariously on an incredibly high, high cliff. Very high cliff. Very high. That is not at all you would die if you jumped off that cliff but it would require um basically gravity to <laughs> cease <laughs> to from exist. working now before you jump from here and swim out to the boat i'm going to give you a word to think about safe spelled s-s-a-f-e it breaks down to speed strength agility flexibility and endurance these are attributes which all great lifeguards must have. Maybe this is the drop zone. The oh. three-story building on top of your head drop zone. Because it definitely looks like it could be. It's not at all a 790-foot cliff. Mm-mm, no. Nope. Now, before each of you jump, I want you to give me one other characteristic a great lifeguard must have. Jason. Instinct. Oh my god, he's awesome! Way to go, Jason! Fantastic! Did you see him? I can't believe he jumped! Woohoo! Woohoo! Jason just literally leaped off a fucking cliff without even thinking about nope. it. Classic Jason. So classic. He's arrogant, but you know what? He's That's a, what, what makes him good at his job. Yeah, he's he fearless. He's fearless. No emotion. He just did it. And I, ugh, Jason, classic. I seriously classic Jason. So all the girls are so horny for that. They're like, so Ooh, much. oh my goodness. And JD too. And Sean's a little bit disappointed because like he's Sean's, like, I didn't think anyone was going to jump. This was just supposed to be a right. lesson. So now he's like, oh, crap. He's like, shit, now I got to jump because everyone's jumping. Okay, now we have JD, who's, a, you know, it's, it is described, like, he's a little bit, well, he's a little bit cocky, too. Right. He's really questioning authority right now. He questions the legitimacy of this exercise and if it's really necessary. And Sean's like, picking up on that. I mean, come on. This is absurd. You're making me jump from a cliff into rocks when will i ever have to jump off of a thousand foot cliff to save somebody and sean's just like it's kind of like when you're a kid and you're like what am i going to use math for in my adult life like what am i going to need to do geometry for like when i buy groceries it's not that jd it's the principle of it it's being able to defer to your leader and that's the lesson sean's truly trying to impart here Uh, sean is i really do like sean as a leader JD, you're next. I have two. Discipline and training. And a question. Do you think in my career as a lifeguard that I will ever have to make an absurd leap from a 60-foot cliff in order to save a victim? Now we have Jason and JD have both jumped off of this really tiny, tiny cliff. It's not at Mm -hmm. all a thousand feet high. Um, And now we've got just the girls left. So it's kind of like it kind of Im- also implies very clearly that when JD makes the jump, Jesse and Keikoa are both super turned on by it. Mm-hmm. So it's already planting the seed that this might be a rivalry. Oh, and now we've got Jesse. So what do you think, Jesse? Is that a little hard on him just now? I don't really know you well enough to say. Maybe you're always like this. Maybe. 
you have any questions? No. I could care less why we're doing it. I think it's fun. So, another attribute that is common to all great lifeguards is physical conditioning, which happens to include speed, strength, agility, flexibility, and endurance, without having to use your cute little acronym. Oh, this is fun. I'm bubbly and nothing ever bothers me. I'm perfect. And uh, that just kind of bugs me, to be honest. But I do admire it, you know. Sorry, I just have a thing against... She's Jessie, very, oh. she's very condescending too. Like, I don't need an acronym to make this jump. Um, and her stunt person's like, neither do I. <laughs> very clearly a stunt person, a different, whole different person. Uh oh. Listen, Allie's, Allie's getting, getting nervous. She's getting nervous. Will my bones be able to hit the water? Where you go, Allie? <laughs> <laughs> so someone just dumps. Allie out of her wheelchair or like so, out of her walker. <laughs> I know we've been joking about Allie being old, but literally that cut was someone just dumping her out of a wheelchair. Everybody else gets a stunt double gracefully. <laughs> she <laughs> belly flopped her full face in the water. Allie just out. looks like a scarecrow. Just someone just <laughs> like someone dumped a scarecrow. Launched it, and it's only like the last maybe ten feet of the jump. And uh, so it's just not flattering. Oh, goodness. That was a good old time. Okay, now uh, Kakoa Kakoa's jumped. Kakoa's already jumped because she's displaying that um, even though she may, like, kind of stand back and be a little more observant and the quiet wisdom of a leader, in the end, she's got what it takes. <gasps> Sean. Okay, now it's Sean's turn to jump, guys. He and swan dives gracefully. Swan, and the music changes. You can Front tuck. <laughs> so... When you see him emerge from the front tuck, the, the majesty of the fall has transformed him <laughs> into, into a completely different person. Oh, they didn't even try with the editing on that didn't one. Didn't even completely try. Completely different. They Hair thought you color would be and everything. so mesmerized by the jump by that you wouldn't dive. Yeah. pay attention. But you don't, I mean, Sean could have very well been um, an Olympic diver. We don't know his total we backstory. We don't know his I mean, backstory. we're going to get to know it, hopefully, but, you know, that might be where that came from because that looked very... I mean, Allie is still my favorite, bless her little old ancient heart. And, you know, looking back, watching this now, I'm like, she's probably 10 years younger than I am right now. <laughs> but at the time, she seemed... At the seemed, time, she just didn't seem to fit. We're just being... We're li- so old. We're being little brat holes. Also, we were, like, so in love with Jason, and we just we could not... Jealous. We were jealous. We were so jealous. So now we've started, and actually, Allie is coming to talk to Sean. Hi. Hi. Uh, Sally, is it? Uh, Allie, no way. Right, Allie. I love that saying. Ah, uh, surf rider, Malibu. Oh, very evocative. Uh, work at the beach, live at the beach, surround yourself with pictures of the beach. Kind of nutty, huh? No, that sounds like a lifeguard. <laughs> Guilty. She's apparently moving into one of the lifeguard huts because they live in these beautiful huts right on the beach. Um, it looks like maybe the bulk of her possessions are rolled up maps. <laughs> <laughs> she got those maps in her early days when the printing press just started. I mean, she had to learn <laughs> nautical miles and nautical directions. So many directions. rolled up maps in that box. So the lifeguards kind of live in this, they live in these beautiful beach huts, which mm-hmm. I didn't know. I would definitely be a lifeguard oh. if I got to live in a beach hut on in Hawaii. Right, um, right on the beach. And we have, I think Kakoa and Jesse are roommates. Are you going to store that here? Is that a problem? But only if I need to sleep. <laughs> and are these drugs yours? Drugs? Is that what you call drugs? Wheat German protein powder? Or maybe you're talking about the power bars. <laughs> Where are you going? Don't leave now. We haven't even gotten through the rolled oats, the trail mix, or my ginseng. Oh. Kako is saying that Jesse has drugs. <gasps> so first but just she's vitamins. like, how dare you? I can't sleep in here. All of your shit is piled up. And then she accuses her of being a drug user when it's just supplements it's literally supplements kakoa is kind of a this is when you kind of don't like kakoa because she's so a hard ass you know but jesse keeps it in stride she's giggling doesn't care laughing spotty little brat <gasps> kakoa is wearing biker shorts but also knee-high leather boots 
Not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> Knee high leather boots. That's what, Katie. That isn't your go-to beach look. Just cash. Okay. Why don't you take a look at this? It's a basic work schedule. And since we're all gonna be living together, I put together a cleaning roster. Who does what when? Floors, kitchen, toilets. And here I revised the LA County incident reports. There were a couple problems adjusting them to Hawaii, but uh, I think they work now. This is a combined physical training chart. I know you probably got your own personal training schedule. And like me, I hate to get off my routine. Um, but I think the team should do some workouts together. Oh, that's the first lifeguard, the little native lifeguard from before. He's making a oh, little comeback. Oh, so he's, he's like going to be a recurring secondary. character. Yeah, might, I hope. So basically, it's just classic lifeguard day. Administration duties. Administration, lots of paperwork, lots of rolled up maps. But Everyone's you also, a little confused what to do. Part of being a lifeguard is you absolutely cannot wear shirts during your administration. <laughs> No, not even tank tops either. Not even a little bit. Always have to be in short shorts and... Sun's out, nothing. guns out policy. Sun's out, guns out. And you guys, these these guys, for those of you listening, their skin is... You could cut it with a knife and I don't think it'd bleed. So leathery. Leathery, leather hide skin. In the best way. Best they way oil possible. It up. They oil it up. I lo- I mean, I loved to tan back in the day. I was actually one of these people, so I get it. But just looking back, it's sometimes it's like, you know, maybe, maybe put on sunscreen. Maybe just a little. Maybe. I don't have a personal training schedule. Do you? Uh, no. I'm just busting onions. I don't mean anything by it. Um, I'm a hundred percent sure the little guy just said, I'm just busting onions. <laughs> <laughs> or busting on ya, which still <laughs> busting on ya or busting onions. Maybe it's Hawaii. Sorry. Either of those. Don't sound good. I love how there's just a casual framed picture of a wave well, on the picnic table. You missed earlier that Coco or no, Allie was like when she approached with her box of maps, she was like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, Ugh, "Just sitting here with my pictures of the beach, studying the beach. Oh, I sound crazy." And she's okay. like, "No, you sound like a lifeguard." Oh, so ooh. that's what shows. Like that's Jump, how you uh, know dramatic. someone's a real lifeguard. Dramatic. Hey, hey. Check it out. Plans for the headquarters at Holly Eva. We'll be sharing a space with the North Shore lifeguards. Dorms, dorms, windows, windows, ocean, communication center, your office, my office. Mitch is back. Right. I was just saying that because I was like, I thought we said goodbye to Mitch, but he's like, no, I'm 100% involved in this. So Mitch decided that he didn't want, he didn't have anyone to see or Mm-mm. things to attend to like he no. said in the last episode. He's still here. And already I feel like a den mother. This one's not going to room with that one. That one's not going to room with this one. I got to worry about who's going to clean out the toilets. And we're not just working together. We're living together 24 hours a day. And the real monster hasn't even shown up yet. What monster is that? Bed buddies, hall walking, sleepovers. You know what I'm talking about. Well, you live it, pal. Sex will tear this team apart. The sex will tear is going to tear the this team, team apart. apart. Keep that in mind, listeners. Sex will tell the team apart. Never mind, Jesse and JD came as an engaged couple <laughs> and no one thought that was going to be a you, problem you don't think i'm going to have sex when she's wearing high leather boots oops i got a birthday party to go to check it out huh oh <gasps> the girl guys. who was rescued from the first episode the is first having episode, a birthday party the girl that was in a coma okay i don't want to be gross or creepy mitch has a weird obsession i'm sorry mitch is uh, uh, approaching her again at her birthday party yes he seems to have this weird connection with this little girl i think it's supposed to be paternal paternal yes it is paternal but it's just a little even then it's a little intense hey darling i got something for you overwhelming Overwhelming. she's starting to grab her chest something does not feel right for her girl please don't tell me she's breathing heavily girl you do not go find another underwater lava cave i she's like i gotta go (laughs) i gotta find it lava tube i'll be right back it's clutching her chest and she's having a hard like if a man were to have or a woman were to have a heart right. attack, it's getting. They're drinking. Very... Oh, the director's chairs are back. <laughs> you know, it's a party when the director's chairs are out. So she's clearly in distress. She turns to them <laughs> in distress, and they're like drinking, and they're like, "It's a party." She's cr- clutching her chest and crying, and she, he's like, "I got a present." There's for you. no no other way you could understand that gesture. <laughs> she's now collapsed. <laughs> Any history of asthma? No, it's not asthma. Sir, let me do my job. I know what I'm talking about here. It's not asthma. And 
they are just not wanting to believe that Mitch knows what the fuck he's talking about. He is a lifeguard. They just because he's not dressed in his lifeguard reds. If, oh he's no. in casual streetwear. So they're back at the hospital that we were the same room they were in. <laughs> same room. Episode one. She's back. Oh, okay. And now it's gonna be this whole she should have lived. He should have right. known it. Should have anticipated this. How could you? She was in the water too long. I've seen it before. Oh my God, I keep thinking, what if you hadn't been at the party? <laughs> so <laughs> we're back to square one. I should have been, been there. Her. You were there. I should have saved her. I should have saved her. I you were at the party. You did save her. But she was secondary drowning and I didn't notice. But if you weren't there, you wouldn't have noticed. But I didn't notice. But you did. But she's in there. It's a lot of this very it, ping pongy it, mm-hmm. back and forth with his dad. It's almost also the the mom's never around. That mom has checked. I feel out. like maybe that mom's she left. a closet alcoholic. <laughs> I do too. She, seems... she was way too cool see episode yes. one, watching her kids drown. She was in a Hawaiian shirt in Hawaii. She sends her daughter <laughs> with some message at the end, like "Tell them boys we're all special." <laughs> I'm at this little oh, martini. So, and so now, birthday party has happened. A second hospital visit has happened, and the mom's still nowhere to be found. And again, Mitch is giving her another gift of jewelry in her hospital right. bed. It's kind of implying that we might have a two men and a little lady situation. Like maybe Mitch and this daughter are going to co-parent. Okay, guys. Now the scene has started. We are having a boat logged launched onto the Hawaiian soil. And now we meet Numi. So... His character is not named Numi, but his name as an actor is Michael Newman. And somehow along the way, we just never really got his character's name. We just kept calling him Numi. I think it's Numi. I think he might have just said my name's Numi. <laughs> he made that up. <laughs> okay, we're going to see. I do this for a living. Hey, it's Mike, Numi, or even Newman, okay? What? But we're meeting Numi and <laughs> the... A other character, a blonde woman. I don't know if she's that was going Jessie. to be. Oh, was that Jesse? Yes. Okay, I didn't see that. And they are at. I don't know, Katie. Is that like an industrial shipping yard? Like an actual? Mm-hmm. It looks like where massive um, shipping, like uh, crates, are brought. Industrial <laughs> shipments are From received. <laughs> yes. Um, there's nothing scenic about this in any way, shape, or form. Like when we're talking about like this dock that they're on. It's not a quaint little dock, you know, of like wood that's extending into a white sandy beach. It's like this massive industrial. You know, like in the movies, like where they go to do drug deals. Yeah. And there's definitely bodies. This is where they're at. And there's so many cranes lifting (laughs) so many big shipping containers. So we're seeing them receive a special boat from Mitch's personal collection. Shipped from L.A. Yellow Baywatch Boat. Oh yeah, you're right. The the iconic Baywatch boat. That's why it's right. so important. So he's saying like, don't even mess around. This is an important shipment. But just when you think this is a casual interaction about administration of lifeguard duties, there never is. It is never casual. No, not in Baywatch Hawaii. They see in the industrial lot a boat. <laughs> um, and a woman falling off that boat. I don't know if she's recreationally boating. I think she's recreationally boating in, in the shipping yard. The shipping which yards? I lived in Hawaii, guys. The shipping yards was the place to be. So I get it. So the boat's being delivered simultaneously, right? So you see it being lowered from the crane. <laughs> because they're waiting for the boat to be lowered from the crane they make the decision to just jump right in. They're just going to jump in. off the dock. <laughs> Dive right in. And to sh- save her. Sh- the woman who's drowning is clearly across a bay, a couple miles away. So you think immediately when they jump in, they're going to make contact. No. <laughs> they jump in. They wait. The boat is lowered slowly <laughs> from the crane. Then and- they jump in the boat. 
<laughs> and then they drive across the bay. It's, this is classic bay. I mean, this is classic lifeguard for those of you who know. That's what you do. I think that's pretty much protocol. They expended so much energy. They could have just waited for the boat to hit the water. <laughs> And just gotten in. And then gotten in. But the boat is smoking and there is a woman in need. And lifeguards are never, oh, they're just the good Samaritans of the world. They're never going to let a woman be in need. No, or man. Or no, man. No. Anybody. Equal opportunity. Humans in need. So Numi, he finds um, he finds a way to swim to the boat that's on fire, um, <laughs> which also happens to be attached to the dock by a rope. <laughs> conveniently that's strange so it's not gonna go too far it's and there's not, not really far. a fire it's just smoky just yeah, very we don't smoky. really know where this danger is coming from if it's just a fire or someone's smoking or... now for those of you who don't know numi is an older gentleman very good looking mm-hmm. older gentleman but he actually is more of what we joke about ali being right. he's actually more in that realm and to be honest We don't really know where he came from. He just kind of is introduced in this episode. And I think that's like the mystery of Numi. Like, what country did he come from? Is he Brazilian? Is he Japanese? (laughs) I think we would know, I guess, if he was Japanese. And I mean, to his credit and to the credit of Baywatch Hawaii being a really progressive (gasps) show, um, he's older and he lacks what some might say is a full head of hair. Yeah. He has a mustache. He has a hairy chest, and they are still making him a sex symbol. So more power to you, Numi. Good more job, Numi. Yeah. And Baywatch, ahead of the game. Baywatch was just really ahead of the game. Stay with me. Stay with me. Come on, Numi. Hang on. So they complete the rescue of the boat that was smoking. Um, apparently they find a man trapped on board in the smoke. Very dramatic. So the woman is, you know, being caressed, caressed lovingly by Jesse while Numi goes back to the boat. Don't cur, goes through the smoke, finds the guy, puts him on his back, crawls out, chucks him over the side into the ocean. And as they're swimming back to the rescue boat, boom. Explosion. Boom. Explosion. And this, I think this is where we get to know that Numi is a true lifeguard. Because This is where you realize, like, you don't give a fuck where he came from. Yeah. He's, he's a he's Superman. Here he's here now, and he's here to save you from a exploding ship that explodes right when you get yeah, saved. Yeah, so it's like, whatever. I'm sold. Numi. <laughs> Numi. Let's he's my new favorite character. Let's go. This next scene, we're transitioning into um, a, something with Allie. I mean, we're going to learn something a little bit about her backstory. Because we're all really, an- I mean, we're all really anxious to know. where We all know a little bit. She served in World War II. <laughs> She's been around for a long time. We do know a little bit about her time with the Code Breakers. <laughs> the Code Breakers. So she is in a helicopter lot. This resume up to date? Yes, it is. Impressive. All this rotor time. Fixed wing, float planes. Thank you. There's some references on the back. I'm here in Hawaii to be a lifeguard, part of the new training center. Problem is, lifeguards in Australia are all volunteers. If I want to stay here, I need a job. Well, you think you can handle this? I'll give it a go. And she is giving us some information that in Australia, all the lifeguards are volunteers, which I guess means they don't get paid. And I guess Baywatch... I guess they get sponsored by their country. I'm or... guessing that the elite squad is sent by their country of origin. I... Which, if you're thinking about this, they're all sponsored by America except for Ali. <laughs> She's the only one from a different. True. I think maybe they... Or maybe Numi. Maybe we still don't know where Numi's from. About <laughs> states versus countries. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. So. Anyway, Allie apparently has to get a side job on top of volunteering or lifeguarding it because it would be ethically wrong <laughs> for her to be paid. And all the culture. other, all the other lifeguards get free right free room and board, but Allie apparently has to so she's pay for working herself. Twenty four hours a day as a lifeguard, it's and ne- also you never stop being a lifeguard. Moonlighting as a helicopter pilot. <laughs> and I guess helicopter pilots are really just needed all throughout Hawaii all the time. Listen, listen. 
when you've got this many years of wartime experience, <laughs> you're not just going to lay in bed all day. No way. No, your downtime is utilized. I am not spending my golden years just sitting around being a lifeguard. I'm doing more. This next maybe 25 to 30 minutes right. is just scenes of Ali looking down out of the helicopter mm-hmm. at all the splendors of Hawaii. Right. It's this way of saying, like, this is a new setting. We're not in L.A. anymore. We broke free from L.A. The bounds are off. We are going to just sort of take in the scenery of Hawaii. I wish this was a team. We gotta find a way to make it a team. 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 So after we have this sort of like a uh, really grandiose introduction to the island, now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of Baywatch. The no nonsense. We started this episode with the starting of their training. You guys, these because it's an elite team, he knows they're elite, but he still doesn't know what they are actually made of. So they're going to be going through a lot of rigorous trainings these next couple episodes so just right. buckle down for that right. because i mean we're not talking like oh run a couple laps this is Mm-mm. this is intense stuff and so. if you need to take a break for your own mental health feel <laughs> do free. it take it get a go get a tea because this next scene coming up let me tell you let me tell you we find ourselves on that classic Baywatch lifeguard boat in the middle <laughs> of, of the ocean. Well, you never you never really know if it's the middle of the ocean. Sometimes there's completely white sand underneath them. Sometimes it's deep ocean. Sometimes there's an island right in the background or people swimming. Kind of as we had mentioned in the first episode, the job of the editor is to make those different sceneries look seamless as edited together. This is another stellar <laughs> example of two completely Supreme different Supreme editing areas. Being um, combined into one. Okay, end of the line. Everyone out. What's up? You get to swim in. <laughs> now remember, it's a race, so last one in the shore loses. So they're being requested by Sean Monroe, again, the captain. He's saying, The hard to, ass. The hard ass. You have to swim to shore. We're all the way out here and you're swimming. And they're like, oh, okay. And of course, Jason, in classic Jason style, jumps right off the boat first without even thinking because he wants to win. It's a competition because they're swimming to shore. Whoever gets there first is the elite lifeguard. Um, So they all jump in and and after him, and now they are swimming um, to shore. Um, As they leave the boat, I think this is important to note, the um, the native Hawaiian lifeguard that we've referenced throughout. He, he doesn't have a name. We don't he, know who he we is. We haven't been told who he is yet. He hasn't yet. been introduced. He shouts an, basically at Jason saying, like, he's singling Jason out because he's still the half native. And this guy's very derogatory towards that. And he tells him, like, you're going to know before a tiger shark bites you, just so you know. Ha, 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 ha. But here's my opinion. It's... They're attracted to each other. Deeply. I think so. It's like a little flirtation going on. Whatever hard assness this guy's trying to scare him away, I don't think it's I don't buy it. Actually, just giving him a little bone. I don't buy it. Hey, Jason. Yeah, Kai. You know how you can tell when you've been bitten by a tiger shark? How? Oh. They're so big and powerful, they push the water in front of them like a bow wave. They say you can feel the water move just before he bites you. Okay, so this scene, they see some kind of small <laughs> floating thing in they're swimming yeah they're swimming out in the ocean we don't know exactly where they are in the ocean but they see a small floating beacon of types and they all stop except for jason because he really wants to get to shore and he's like fuck that i'm gonna go like don't i don't care about this why are you guys stopping but i think they're sensing it's something a little bit more all right so they're they're saying it's it, this is the only thing this could possibly mean 
is that a ship has wrecked. Ship, yeah, shipwrecked. And That's it's a one this... in a million chance that we would find it. One but in it a looks million. Like we have. <laughs> and again, the cuts from deep ocean to shallow ocean to bay, it's mm-hmm. just really amazing. So they swim up to this emergency beacon, and I think Allie is like, it's an ERIBP 12.15 version, because she's been around for a right, long she's time. Like, I manufactured the first <laughs> version of these. I've bought these before. It was just a block of foam with a bell on it. <laughs> what, what, when someone swam by, I just rang that darn bell. That's how we knew they was drowning. <laughs> I lost Katie. She's having, we we lost Katie. Uh, she's can't handle that alley <laughs> ringing that bell. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. So, so now they each, um, Kikoa dives down first to check it out. Sure enough. 15 or 20 fathoms. I don't know if you guys know what a fathom is, but in lifeguard language, it's that's deep. 15 fathoms One, deep. one fathom. Two, <laughs> one fathom. <laughs> three, one fathom. That's how she knows. I think that's how she probably counted that. <laughs> so it is down. There's a boat down there, basically. And they're all kind of debating. So we have JD, Jason, Jesse, O, Ali, and Kakoa. Hey, everybody all... but Numi, Mitch, and Sean. Yeah, Numi, Mitch, and Sean are not there. Um, I think Mitch went back to LA. I don't know. He's still kind of just popping in and out. Yeah, I mean, we're not 100% sure. We talked to him briefly at the beginning of this episode when they're um, debating the sex. Oh, destroying the that's team. right. Mm-hmm. Sex destroying the team. So he is around. Um, so I think what follows is for the next 45 to 50 minutes, right. we have intense underwater shots of each person swimming and they seem to be doing the exact same thing as the person in front of them it's Um, just sort of like you can almost sense the director's like okay each of you swim to the camera look around and then proceed (laughs) past the camera and the person behind you will do the same because they all literally choreograph the same And they all look exactly the same. They all feel, so they're exploring this underwater boat that's 20 fathoms deep, but they all can hold their breath that long. Yeah, this whole entire time they've been holding their breath. And they're like looking around, but each per if someone grabs like a metal rod, everyone grabs the metal rod and looks around. And this is continuing for, again, about 50 minutes. Um, Because we have how many people? Five? We have to get through engaged every- <laughs> in this, so we have to see every, every single person. Swim person. By. And for those of you listening, as we are talking, this is con- this is continually gone on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think what eventually happens is they find a hull, right? right? A hull, a hull of a boat, and they go underneath and they start knocking on this hull. Well, because also they spend about twenty minutes swimming down and then they'll come back up have a brief surface meeting (laughs) then turn around swim for another 20 minutes explore the ship come back up for a quick surface meeting and communicate (laughs) and so on and so so on and so on about 20 times so finally once they hear this knock at the hull oh did i did we say that um jd decides he's gonna knock the hull to see if he can get a response if by any chance one in a million there is someone trapped in this shipwreck. And so he's deciding to go down and knock. So he knocks on this hull and everyone's super on the edge of their seat, bangs on it. They go up, have another meeting, go back down, bang on it again, go up, have another meeting. And I think they determined that they heard the faintest of knockings from they the inside. They all heard a response from the hull. Which for me gives me an immediate like, oh my God, I'm so stressed out. So There's someone down there. So can you imagine there. if Sean had not taken them to the middle of the ocean? Dropped them off, told them to swim to shore. They would have never, <laughs> never. found the shipwreck. And, and I'm my heart's beating. I mean, could you imagine being trapped in a hull? No. Ugh, one in a ten million chance. But and you can't happening. really hear anything that's going on. Just theoretically, like those pounding could be anything. It could be a shark. <laughs> it could be a rock. It could be a rock or a jellyfish or anything. Just clunk. But. So now you know what they have to do. I mean, there's no way that they're leaving this boat. It doesn't make any sense to go back to their life bar boat, get equipment. No. They don't get have proper any, diving equipment um, and medical supplies to right. come out and save it. They have to do this right now. Not one walkie-talkie. 
<laughs> they're literally in the middle of the ocean, but they have to do this. And I get it. They have to do it right now. It wouldn't make any sense to go get any other supplies or people to help. No, no, no calls. No, no calls, signals, no hospitals, nothing. nothing. So that's good. So they're saying like, we can either hope that the Coast Guard's going to come out because the eBurp has set its signal. Or we can just take this into our own hands. <laughs> and what do you think the Baywatch team is going to do, Katie? What do you, or do you think they're going to wait? Mm, they're... Hells to the F no. I can't even believe you would ask that question. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm just... It's more rhetorical. <laughs> they don't wait. They won't wait. They wouldn't wait. So, again, we just have more pounds on the thud. They go up. They're trying all these different things. They're gathering all these tools. And finally, they are going to do it. So they... They decide that just with the with all of them working together, they're all all of their muscles. They can pull the hole open with their bare hands. <laughs> they spend twenty minutes diving back down to the ship. So much diving, so and then much they diving. All attempt to open it. Well, clearly, immediately, Jason's giving the cut it, cut it signal because he's like, <laughs> "I was a fool." So they spend ten more minutes swimming up to the ship, up to the surface, so they can come up with a plan look for any scrap of metal surrounding the ship doesn't matter if it's rusty doesn't matter lockjaw is not an option yeah <laughs> pick it up we're going to use it as a crowbar this ship does look like it's been sunk for quite a while um but i guess it just sank so okay so ali's picking up an actual anchor she's swimming with an anchor right now which is anchors are used in, in case you don't know <laughs> to hold boats in place they're pretty heavy <laughs> but Allie decides this looks like a great way to and pry open the hole <laughs> they are all just picking up the heaviest metal devices at the bottom of the ocean oh i don't know if you noticed this too katie the bottom of the ocean actually is just like rocks soft like that sand. fish tank rock sand. sand oh yeah they're like soft sandy there's no coral or anything mm -mm, no um, that's what the bottom of the ocean looks like so they're all finding tools. And you guys, as this is getting more intense. They're holding their breath. Yeah. Keep in mind, they don't have oxygen. So they're collecting and scouring a shipwreck while holding their breath 20 nautical miles under sea or whatever she Fathoms. Says. Fathoms. Fathoms under the sea. And it's hard to believe, but since we started this scene, it's just we're still looking at underwater scenes of people just swimming around. I mean, if you want... If you thought that watching Baywatch Hawaii was going to gloss over the skills or the rescues, you were wrong. Wrong. That's, that's where their meat and potatoes they, is, they, bread and butter. And going on this journey with us, you'll notice we'll have the classic Baywatch rescue scenes. Right. Baywatch has so much um, dialogue and so much storyline that sometimes they can't fit it all in. And mm -hmm. so sometimes they just choose to do a a rescue scene instead of it because there's so much juicy dialogue. It also gives you time to process all yeah. the things that are happening. They don't want you to, yeah, because there's so much to process because the dialogue is so intricate, so intense that they like to like help you have a breather and give you, you know, here's a 25 minute you know, montage of people swimming and you're just like, thank also, you for that. It's also a really beautiful metaphor that while they're doing this, they're diving deeper. Mm-hmm. And it gives us, as audience viewers, the opportunity to dive deeper into the storyline <laughs> Yeah, as we just watch this rescue. We can find nonstop metaphors in Hawaii, Baywatch Hawaii, nonstop. It, and it's, it's symbolic of life. something that people didn't realize was yeah. part of the intricate puzzle that is the writing of Baywatch the Hawaii. The web. The web. I'd like to think of it more of a web. But Yes. Um, so at this point, Still swimming. they've collected all of their weapons at the bottom of the ocean. They put them in a nice pile by the hole. They swim <laughs> back up to the shore. A little and rescue they say, pile. <laughs> they say, I found this. I found this. I found this. I found this. Let's go down and break out whoever's trapped down there. I, if it's a whoever. I'm so Whatever. anxious. I'm on the edge of my seat but, right but now. But keep in mind... The knocks coming from inside the hole are getting weaker. <laughs> so they're really concerned that this if someone's trapped in there, they're going to run out of oxygen. Oh, don't tell me that, So Katie. they That's are in so a race stressful. against time. A race Literally a race time. against time. Okay. So they're back down at number 10. Back down at dive number 10. We'll get through this. Okay. So everyone's swimming down. 
again, by one. Again. In line. In line. So we in pass line. the camera. In line, one by one. And they find their <laughs> little rescue. weapon pile. <laughs> Their little Tool safety pile. pile, and they all have their own little thing that they found. Oh, and now they are building a kind of a MacGyverish type mm-hmm. of contraption. They're going to use it as leverage. <laughs> so they all turn into MacGyver, and you can tell that they're working really hard to come up with this little contraption to open the. They opened the it. The hole opens, bubbles flying. Oh, Can't see a darn God. thing. Who is it? What's happening? Where's this? You guys. You. I'm done shut with this. Your I'm done. fucking. Mouse. Sorry, guys. We got your hopes up that we were going to do this Shut whole thing. Shut your I'm wet done. mouse. I'm going home. <laughs> it's Mitch, you guys. It's Mitch. All's good, guys. It's just Mitch. He was in the hole with oxygen this entire time. <laughs> this entire time. This is classic Mitch. I My emotions were all over the place. I cannot believe that was just Mitch. And Mitch floats to the top in his wetsuit with his oxygen. I pulled that up, Mitch. You are the last person I expected to see. Let me get this right. The customs never about to swim. Oh, well, whether you guys go or you get Guess what? You pass. <laughs> Before you get too cocky, you still got to swim to shore. Remember. Oh. Sean is still looking for the weak link. Oh, no. Never forget my pins again. Oh, classic Baywatch. They always get you. They You always are doing a test about something, but it's not that test. It's so tricky. It's so tricky. They know how so to this train. Point, oh, my God. I still can't get over that. The fact sun that is Mitch. literally going down. Oh. It's setting on the day. They've spent approximately six and a half hours <laughs> orchestrating the rescue of the Mitch. The sun is and definitely then he tells set. Them, and then he tells them, you think you guys were done? You still have to swim to shore, bitches. And he just, they all, in good spirits, are like you guys that was just crazy oh i would so after murder mitch that much energy literally from sunrise to sunset yes they are still saving this person still that required ended up being to swim mitch. sure oh and I, I mean i would feel betrayed i'm sorry but that's why i'm not i would feel like furious that's, that's why I'm not you wouldn't like pass the test i probably wouldn't pass the test either we're too weak we're too weak I would have found that weapons pile and I would have literally bashed his head in underwater. <laughs> I would have kept him in that hole. I and just left drown his him. body in the hole. I would have drowned him. Mitch! So I am so almost so, I'll say shocked. That's the word. That's the emotion that I'm feeling. I'm almost so shocked that I can't do a recap of this episode, but I think we can. Um, so basically, just of those of you listening, we started off the episode with those the, of you who aren't listening. Those of you who aren't listening wouldn't know that we. Were doing you this. don't know, so never mind. <laughs> well, maybe there, maybe you're cooking in your kitchen and you're distracted and you're not really listening to what we're saying. Um, the base, the five lifeguards. We have Jesse O, JD, Jason, Allie, Kakoa. They're all standing on the top of a cliff, right? And that's the Sean's first test. Them the- Sean's giving them the rigmarole, mm-hmm. and that just sets the precedence for the whole episode. We are we're learning. In training mode this is about what it takes Mm -hmm. so from the from the top to the bottom (laughs) we are learning what it takes so then that pretty much happens and then we have kind of this intermission with numi where numi is introduced for the first time Mm -hmm. again we don't know where numi came from we what where he lives? Either. There's just no context, but we know he's a character because he's but we in have, the credits. But we have the most info, really, because True. he's a hero. Because he's a hero, so he instantly is. we're introduced to Numi, and then he saves somebody in the docks. Right. Someone was vacationing in the docks. So we didn't even have time. We didn't have even time. Matter. I didn't have time to process that. We also learned that Ali is a helicopter, <laughs> midnighting as a helicopter mm-hmm. pilot, because um, she needs a second job. Because apparently Australia doesn't fund their lifeguards. It's also important. I. I didn't touch on this in the be- in during the conversation that she's having with the helicopter pilot, but anytime Allie's traveling outside of her Baywatch duties, she's wearing a flowery one-piece <laughs> bathing suit and, and a sh- jean jacket. And short, short, short khaki shorts with big boots. She does not ever wear real clothes. Never. She's, she lives in a ba- in a bathing suit. I think it's supposed to represent she's like kind of Australian. Right. So she's like down under. Like she's right. got the boots on and everything. The intensity. Like I don't even get dressed in the mornings. 
<laughs> so then after that, we had a, like an eight or nine minute montage of the splendors of Hawaii. <clears throat> and then we jump into this final test that we just walked through where they have to swim to shore. Sean swam is making through. their swim through. We didn't. Yeah. So Sean made them swim to shore. And in the midst of swimming to the shore, they see this buoy and like, we got to save it. Like being the lifeguards they are, being the people that they are. You're never training. You're never uh, lifeguarding. You're living as heroes, basically. Right. There's never a time off. So there's no way that they would see that and been like, okay, well, we're just going to swim right past There's it. no way. They could have had a million dollars on the shore. No, they have to do their duty. So after a solid 20 minutes of swimming scenes and little um, above surface mm -hmm. plans, meetings. little meetings, they finally get the person out. And it's Mitch. I can't emphasize Son that enough. Son of a Mitch. Son of a Mitch. And then they're all happy about it. They swim to shore and they, it's been a day. They're, instead so, of being, yeah. Episode two. And I think that goes into like a life lesson. Right. You 100%. Know? So I think this less, this episode is really teaching us like when you feel overwhelmed and when there's so much going on and you feel like you're saving all your friends' lives, mm -hmm. your family's lives, your dog's lives – you need to take a moment for yourself right. and kind of reflect the splendors of your life. Mm -hmm. Just like they reflected the splendors of Hawaii for 17 hours. Use you, the powers of meditation to yeah. take a helicopter through your own mind. Exactly. And bring yourself down so that you can handle the next challenge of life. I think that was basically what the episode was trying oh, 100%. to do. 100%. Like, the nuance of the episode. There's always going to be moments where you can see yourself from a distance and just really appreciate, no matter what the stressors are, that you can just have a moment of peace in the clouds, <laughs> take stock. Or in the water. Or in the water. Take stock and then return um, back feeling a little more rejuvenated than you maybe started out with. So we hope that you're able to uh, meditate on the message of this episode. Mahalo, Hawaii. Bye.